Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7. Hello and welcome to another Game Nexus video. Today we're going to be taking yet another look at Tekken 7. And we're going to be taking a look at two more of the DLC characters. And in this video we're going to be taking a look at Julia Chang. And just like I said in my other video, you can see it shows the Rage Art and Rage Drive moves, which uh, are unique for each character, but usually the actual inputs are fairly similar between the different characters, so it's not that hard to figure it out if you didn't see that before you started. Here I come! Yeah! Round one. And for some reason, in this version of Tekken, they've taken Julia and made her into this, um, crazy social media blogger girl who seems to care about all her subscribers and everything. Although, then again, I guess it's kind of cool because, if I recall correctly, in the, um, previous games, she didn't really have all that much character, so at least they gave her something. Round two. So it's kind of a cool uh, addition for her. Now, in this video, we're going to be looking at Julia Chang and Anna Williams, who are both added DLC characters to Tekken 7 in the various uh, first two season passes here. Other characters include uh, Lei Wulong, um, Armor King, Yeah, see, as I said, she's like an IRL streamer in this, so who cares about her social media, but uh, other characters who we got, we of course we got Eliza, who was the like day one DLC character that was a bonus for people who pre-ordered, and we also got Craig Marduk, and a bunch of others that you'll see like after I, because uh, honestly off the top of my head I can't think of all of them, but... It was a decent roster, and if you didn't see my first uh, Tekken 7 DLC characters videos that I uploaded along with this one, um, Here I come. Yeah. there have been two season passes when it comes to the new characters and features for Tekken Round 7, one. and Fight. they added a bunch of new characters, and also like some extra costume packs and everything. So it was kind of cool that they fleshed the game out a bit since its release in um, 2006. And now, just for people who haven't seen my first video, the original arcade video version of this game came out on March of 18th of 2005. And then the update Faded Retribution came out on July 5th of 2006 with the worldwide release of the PlayStation 4, Windows, and Xbox One versions coming out on June 2nd of 2017. Which is kind of cool to get like a worldwide release all at once. And unfortunately, Nintendo players kind of get left out in the cold because they never ported this to Nintendo. And then of course, fairly recently, as at the time of this recording, it is... It is August of 2019. Just fairly recently, this year in fact, on February 13th of 2019, Tekken 7 Faded Retribution Round 2 hit Japanese arcades. Which, the cool part about this internet connected arcade hardware is I can just push an update to the hardware. Which was the same thing with the uh, PlayStation 3 based hardware and of course um, Sega's Lindbergh and its various hardwares. With hard drive based games like this, you can easily just push an update to the system and not require the arcade operator to have the physical media in order to actually add the features. Stream is live. You ready? Round one. Fight. So it's kind of cool that, unlike the olden days, as I would say it, like for instance with. Tekken 4, a new uh, security dongle was required in order to add uh, features to a game. Or with Soul Calibur 2, you had to replace the DVD-ROM disc, 
they could just push those updates over the network and um, add new features or DLC characters. And as I'd said in my other video, I would imagine Round 2 didn't, like, reinvent the wheel like Faded Retribution did. It probably just added features that might have got your DLC roster up to date if they hadn't been adding them all along. So it's kind of cool to be able to have that kind of feature. And I know at this point, uh, Tekken uh, Tag Tournament 2 Unlimited, its servers are no longer online. So even if you have like all the uh, silly nonsense you need to get it connected up to a Namco server, they no longer support uh, Tekken Tag Tournament 2 Unlimited. They only support Tekken 7 at this point on their servers. Plus, of course, you need a crazy Namco license. Round one. And I do think it would be a little cool if uh, Heihachi and uh, Kazumi would actually say something uh, special to each of the characters, but honestly, I don't know. Um, I have played as any of like, the key characters, such as like if uh, uh, Kazuya were to cut or Jin were to uh, face Heihachi, maybe he would say something special. But considering they have the uh, the Mishima Saga story mode in this game, they probably just saved it for that and just left this as your kind of arcadey experience where you go through five matches. And apparently, there are certain conditions that can be met that would replace Kazumi with um. It would replace Kazumi with Akuma. And I'm guessing that the reason why they have the subscribe button there as blue instead of red is they didn't want YouTube to get all mad and, like, claim a copyright against uh, uh, Bandai Namco games for, like, infringing on them. So it kind of, like, skirts that direct, um, oh my god, you're ripping off our thing and kind of gives you that idea of, like, Facebook slash YouTube. And the funny thing is... My first time playing this as Julia, I got Akuma as the boss. And I don't know how I got Akuma as the boss. Maybe it was like something I did during the game. But no matter what I did, I couldn't beat him. Which is why you're not seeing that gameplay. Because, um, yeah... I never ended up getting through, and it was like a night that it was fairly late, and I was kind of tired, so I didn't end up uh, finishing that gameplay. And I figured, you know what, I'll just come back and play it again, and it won't be a big deal. But yeah, um, when I played it again, I was thinking, oh, well, maybe Julia only faces Akuma or something. But unfortunately, that's not to be had. And um, it turns out... There are certain conditions that you could meet that gives you Akuma as the boss, who... As I'd mentioned in my original Tekken 7 video, and in um, the other DLC characters video that I made... Certain conditions get met, and Akuma will just be your boss. Now, every time I see that, uh, that, like, cutscene there, I always think to myself how cool it would be is if there was some kind of morph that took Kazumi, like, the regular Kazumi into, like, this demon Kazumi. 
instead of just like literally fading to white, and then like, oh wow, she transformed. Because personally, I think it's kind of anticlimactic that it's kind of like one of those magic tricks that it's like, hey look, it's the magician. And then they raise like some big curtain and then all of a sudden it's not. And you're like, oh well, something just happened while we couldn't see. And I was thinking, like, some kind of, like, werewolf-like transformation would have been awesome, but I guess they figured it would just be easier that the game fades to white, the game loads in the demonic model instead of having some sort of, uh, transformation scene that would, uh, give you your, uh, conversion into the, uh, evil version. And now, as you can see here, there's the treasure battle and the arcade battle. Those are your two, like, major non-story mode battle modes. And you can select your right or left sides. Oh, and of course, Geese Howard was another one of the DLC characters that got added. He was the one I couldn't think of earlier. And as you can see, I actually uh, customized Anna Williams and gave her her like more old school look. Cause honestly, the costume that they gave her as her default with that stupid like hat on her head, I didn't like how it looked. I just think it looked kind of silly and I thought it was cool that you actually could unlock the um, older costume and they even had like the little portrait here to go with it. So you can uh, make her look like the old Anna Williams, if you will. Come over here. Let me talk to your real cool. Round one. And now I know I made mention of it in my original Tekken 7 video from two years ago, but there actually was a funny thing that happened when Tekken 7 was almost coming out and they announced Lucky Chloe. She's like this kawaii Japanese character, and um, there were people complaining about it because, you know, for some reason everybody likes to complain about everything ever, and um... The actual maker of Tekken 7 was like, oh, okay, for you Americans who don't like everything Japanese, we'll put in, like, this, uh, the sweaty American kickboxer guy, because that's what you guys like, right? And, like, everyone, like, was, was, uh, a bit of a gasp there. They're like, are you kidding? Really? You're gonna do that? It's like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna make the game the way I want. And that's one thing in uh, the media today I always think to myself. Instead of everyone complaining about how a game or a character is depicted, I always look at it this way. If you don't like something in a video game, don't play it. Just because one character offends you or something, it doesn't mean that you have to go to the... Uh, go to the um, maker of the game and demand they change it. It's almost like uh, Game of Thrones. Everyone has a petition to uh, redo the last season because it was quote-unquote bad. Let me talk to you real cool. Anybody else want a piece? Round one. And apparently everyone was, a lot of people, I think it's like one point something million people were saying, hey, they should completely redo the last season of Game of Thrones and the uh, answer from the makers of Game of Thrones was, um, no, we're not going to do that. Because the problem w with just about anything, especially a show with such a claim like Game of Thrones had, no matter what they did, there'd be no way to please everybody. So they figure, you know what, just leave it how it is. And I was, and the thing that I always think about is how like Mass Effect 3, ev everyone complained how cookie cutter the endings were. And then the creators actually did like a extra bit at, at the end that was a bit more of an ending, which the funny part is in the year 2019, I have still not gone back and played the end of Mass Effect 3 to see what that ending was like. You win. My pleasure. And now if you didn't know, uh, the character of Lei Wulong was actually based off of Jackie Chan just like the character of Law was based off of Bruce Lee. 
And it was kind of cool to see Lei Wulong come back as a DLC character in this because he wasn't included in the base game or in Faded Retribution. And of course, Bob here was the, uh, the fat American character that got added in Tekken 6. And in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 on the consoles, there was actually an added character called Slim Bob, who's basically Bob, but skinny. Come over here. Let me talk to you real close. Now. Let the show begin. Round one. Fight. But unfortunately these days you tend to see a lot of that, uh, people complaining about something in a game, movie, or whatnot. And a lot of times the makers will just cave and change it. Now, like, I could understand in the case of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie that that was gonna come out. And the character in the game in the movie looked nothing like the character of the game. And it's one of those ones where, like, if you didn't, like, ever play the games, which, you know, most of the audience who would be watching the movie played the games, you probably wouldn't care what the character looked like. But if it's, like, one of those things that you grew up with since a little kid, and this character looks like this creepy mutant of some sort, it doesn't really work for most people, so that's one of those cases I like to understand, but lately when it comes to games, I've seen a lot of makers, they just... You win. Such a rush. What I was saying is I see a lot of makers with video games. When it comes to um, games that people were complaining a bit too much about, they either A, they don't make the changes, or B, like with um, Dead or Alive Extreme 3, they just didn't release it in America because I know people would complain about it. So the people who wanted to buy it can just import it due to region free consoles, which is a very good idea in this day and age. Round one. And of course, somewhere down the road, I will uh, be releasing a Dead or Alive Extreme 3 video showing off that game in both its uh, PlayStation Vita and um, PlayStation 4 forms, but that's going to be a later video. But I definitely like, especially these Japanese game makers you see it a lot more with, they don't, uh, they don't buckle under the public pressure of something being, like, unacceptable. They just either A, they don't release the game in the region where everyone's complaining, which in a lot of times it's unfortunately America. Or they just release it as is and hey, if you don't wanna if you don't like this game, don't play it. But I remember when I first saw Anna Williams do her um her thing with the gun, it made me think of like BB Hood from Darkstalkers, or as she's known as in Japan, Boletta. She always has like a bunch of crazy guns and everything when she would uh, do her uh, finishing moves. Open wide. I figured I'd just be quiet that time since I was talking the first time she did the move and you couldn't hear what she was saying. But, uh,. Her pulling out the bazooka just reminds me of BB Hood, or as she's known as in Japan, Boletta. She'd have like these big soldier guys just all of a sudden come up and they'd have these machine guns shooting shooting your enemies and it was always like crazy. Especially when your uh, opponent was just about to win and then that like completely wipes them out. She's a very fun character to play as in uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on Naomi. And now here is, of course, our battle with Kazumi. And now I definitely have to applaud uh, Tekken 7's customization mode. It's definitely a step in the right direction that you can add all this custom equipment, just like you could in uh, Tekken 6 and Tekken Tag. But it doesn't go that, like, extra mile like Soul Calibur has been doing since Soul Calibur um, 3. Where you can legitimately make your own character based off of one of the character's fighting styles and um, basically just make them your own. So 
you could have any character you want and just make them look however you want. And they don't have to just be like a custom version of Anna or a custom version of Kazumi. They would just be a new character. But maybe eventually Namco will do that with Tekken, but they just haven't yet. And every time I see Kazumi say, I'll grind your bones to dust, I'm always like, please don't. But yeah, Tekken 7 is, is a really good fighting game. And as I said, coming very soon after these videos have been made here, Tekken 7 Season uh, 3 will happen. I believe it's going to be another $30, but basically you have like six months or so of DLC content released like every month or every other month. So it's kind of a cool value, and it's not like some manufacturers of games who do these season passes like uh, Tecmo would do, and it's like a hundred dollars, and you're getting like one character and just a bunch of cosmetic items. I like how Namco's DLC is like much cheaper, and it's um, a lot more nice content, but yeah. Definitely play Tekken 7, grab some of the DLC if you like what you see here. It's definitely a good time. Well, this has been another Game Nexus video, and I shall see you later. Bye.